6,000. 6,000 thoughts per day is what we have in our waking hours, which is 375 thoughts per hour. Now, if we take just a small percentage, 0.1% of all those thoughts in a day, and say they become ideas for your business, so that would be six potential ideas that we write down for our business. Now, that might not sound too much, but again, that becomes 42 ideas per week. And then over a year, that's over 2,000 ideas. And maybe your desk begins to look a little like mine, just full of notebooks. So raise your hand if you've got notebooks full of ideas as well. <laughs> Lots of you, I'm in good company. Because the thing is, it can be really challenging in business when we've got so many ideas. And you might have a great idea, but then you find yourself all the way over here and you've got no idea how to take that idea to market. Because it's challenging to share your ideas in an easy to understand and very succinct way. So when we're looking at this and we're thinking, well, maybe how can I get my idea out there? It's even harder when apparently research is telling us our attention spans are getting less and less. In fact, we only have eight seconds to capture someone's attention. And if it's on social media and in videos, we've got under two seconds. So the question then becomes, how can you make your ideas sticky or how to turn your idea into profit? And you might be wondering, who am I, Susanna Ray, and why am I so passionate about helping your ideas become profitable? Well, I am sat at this intersection between business and design. Being a top graduate at both business and art school, I had everything I needed on paper to be success. But the hard truth is, theory doesn't create sales. And I'd love to say that at the start of my business, everything was flying, but it was really hard because the typical marketing advice out there, it was extroverted, in your face, you've got to stand up, you've got to make 100 calls a day. And I was finding myself just staying back. I'm introverted in nature and I was hiding and I just couldn't do what was being said. So have any of you struggled to show up for your business? Give me a nod if you have. Yeah, I'm seeing quite a lot. And it's tough. And it's not your fault. Because it's my belief that as children, particularly girls, we're brought up to be quiet and demure. If we've got an opinion, we're being bossy. If we want to share our accomplishments, we're bragging. So as much as it might not be your fault, do you agree with me that it is your responsibility if you've got an idea that can benefit others to show up and share that idea? And would you agree with me that if you are a business owner, you need to stand up and be seen? no matter how terrifying it is. And this is where I found myself, is I realised I had to rewrite the extrovert marketing rulebook because I had to find a way that was aligned to me as an introvert, which doesn't mean I'm shy or socially awkward. It means I just need to be aware of my energies. And so I rewrote that and I aligned the introvert way, which meant serving and working 100% online. And so that's what I did. And it is when traction started to happen in my business. And you'd find me in February 2021 
I'm on Zoom with my masterminders, going, hello, Alison, Jane. Oh, I can see you all coming in. You know how this works. It's like questions. It's a Q&A session. Oh, hang on. Have I put you all on mute? Oh, God, Zoom's updated again. <sighs> ah, Dana Gita. I see you there. You're in your orange jacket on a stripy sofa. And you've got a slight smile on your face. Um, hmm, call it intuition. But I've got a feeling that there's something you'd like to share today. Oh, Susanna, yes. I've been struggling. I've really been struggling this last two weeks. I've been showing up. I've been doing everything on socials. I've been getting people on calls. But then it's like I'm speaking a foreign language. I sort of share everything about it, and I probably give far too much away because at the end of the call, they're not buying my service, even my basic low-level service. And instead, they're just saying, thank you very much, and I don't hear from them again. Now, Susanna, I don't know whether, you know, you've probably never been here. You're super organized, and you've probably never been in this situation. But is there something that you can help me with this? Dana Gita, uh, first of all, thank you so much for having faith that I've always been this way because it's absolutely not the truth. And it's why I created this mastermind space. Now, seeing you all here right now, um, and there's no questions, do you mind if I switch it up a bit and share a process, a framework, if you like, that I use myself when I'm at that sticking point that Dana Gita just mentioned. Yes? Yeah. I'm getting lots of yeses at the room at the time. So that is what I did. For the next hour, I shared my framework. And it was only at the end that when my masterminders started sharing how they felt, that it clarified how they see their business offers it's amazing how something so complex can be simplified with shapes and words. Brilliant. I love I've got this map now. Wow, what a unique and fun format that totally elevates my business. And this structured my thoughts in a usable visual tool to share. Because I realized it was like a secret ingredient in a recipe. And maybe in this instance, you've got a secret ingredient or a process that you haven't thought of sharing with your clients before now, but they could benefit from. And that is what was happening to me in this moment. I suddenly realized I needed to share my frameworks and share them more widely. And it's not a new concept. Frameworks have been around us since the start of civilization. Ancient philosophers across different cultures have been using, this is the tree of life that we see across in different spaces, to try and explain like, how we came about and the interconnectivity of things. But our brain loves the familiar, and we all knew trees. So they based their philosophical results and what they were thinking about on the tree of life. So frameworks are not a new concept. And I started seeing them everywhere. I was attending conferences. And when I was watching the speakers who had successful businesses, they were always sharing a framework. Some were better, some were worse. But what I did notice is those that were in the business of transformation, the coaches, the consultants out there, is when they shared with a framework, their message connected far faster with their audience than when they were speaking alone. And so I started thinking about what could this be? And before I go further, let me just define how I define a framework. And that is a framework, in its simplest terms, is a skeletal outline connecting ideas together. And with my clients, I take them through three developmental steps. Now, the first is to simplify. And what we do here is we go down into the core concept of the business. 
Because if you can simplify something, it makes it understandable. And if it's understandable, it then becomes repeatable. Which brings us to the next step when we solidify your method that you serve to your clients. And the last stage is when we amplify with the ideas and impact that you have in your business. And we weave in your branding and your values, which I'll go into in more depth in a little. So you see, your frameworks, they can survive and be shared widely. And they can survive through the centuries like the tree of life has. So what does this mean? Well, potentially, your framework can be bringing you money and earning whilst you sleep and even when you're dead. Though obviously you won't be benefiting then, but your family will. So raise your hand if that's of interest to you. Fantastic. So it was my masterminders who showed me absolutely that my frameworks, which previously been hidden in the depths of my trainings, actually stood at this intersection of business and design just like I did. And it was this moment that was February 2021 that I attribute to the birth of my toolkit of Sparkle Frameworks, though they're yet to be named and trademarked at this stage. Because here's the thing, it was my, it was my masterminders who I'll be forever grateful for because they showed me that my frameworks, they didn't just make sense to me, but they were easy to understand, they were fun to create, and they weren't only needed, but they were wanted too. Because frameworks really help you take your ideas and move them into profit. So what I realized is I needed to share my bigger business framework with a wider audience. And I've ha always been working online, so I've got the website and the blog, and I thought, I'll write a blog around this bigger business framework. So I started writing, and the ideas started coming, because this might look very simple, but there's many layers below. So what started as a blog, six weeks later, then resulted in my book, The Introvert Way Roadmap. And it launched to Amazon with five-star reviews in September 2021. Now, I know, being introverted in nature, when given a choice, I'm likely to be sat near the periphery or the back of a room like this. But what I'd love to do if there's... I'd love to see a raise of hands of who are my introverted business owners in the room, and I'd love to give a copy of this to one of you. Excellent. Thank you for sharing up. Uh, yourself in the back in the olive top. What's your name? Yes, you have block hair, glasses. Lisa, can you pass this back to Lisa? Keep your hand raised so people know. And come and find me at the end and we'll turn it into a signed copy. So, and let me know. <laughs> so it's been a wild ride since then. And I've been featured in magazines. I've won awards. And I've been on many online guests as online global summits and been a guest in many podcasts. This is the first time I've spoken on a stage in person. But this was a result because of the processes that I developed, the step-by-step -step frameworks that not only worked for me and created these results, but for my clients too. And it's one of my most favorite things to do, and I call it setting off sparklers in my client's mind that we do inside the spark space, which is my mastermind today. And we have a success formula, and that is clarity and impact equals traction. Sounds simple, but yes, it does take hard work. And there's five keys to make your frameworks sparkle, because sparkle frameworks go beyond the basic mnemonic or acronym, like SMART goals. I'm sure you've all heard of SMART goals. A bit boring, right? We want to bring them into you know, 2023 and beyond. 
And where we start is looking at your value. And this is how you live your brand, the values that you bring into your business, the value that you share with your clients. Because if you don't have your values there, people don't know if they're with you or without you, with they're against you. So give me a thumbs up if you've got values you live by in your business. Who's got values in the business? Excellent. If you didn't raise your thumbs, then have a think about it because it helps get us up every day as to what other values we're running in our business. The second key is being valid. Now this is having a valid process, something that has shown and got proven results, whether it is just yourself at the start and how it's worked for others. It's about sharing testimonials, reviews, it's your social proof, because this brings the trust that people know that what you say you can do for them will absolutely work for them. So as you're listening to me, again, is there anyone here who feels like, just give me a nod, that you've got a process that you already are aware of in your business? So if there's a couple of nods I'm seeing. And if you didn't nod, if you think about it, you might not think, you might think, well, every client is individual. I do something different. But if you take a step back and then look at the big overarching process, what you'll probably find is there is a flow of different segments and sections that you take your clients through. Because we all do that in business. It's just to begin with when you're working one-to-one, -one, you might not be aware of it. Now, the next key is to be visual. I love the visuals, as you can see, <laughs> with the frameworks, because without having a visual, it's really hard to communicate fast and effectively. And remember those short attention spans? We can get lost if they just see yet another talking head. And what we've got to thank for this is the picture superiority effect, which tells us that 80% of people remember better what they see and only 20% what they read. And what does this mean? That pictures are preferable in helping us remember and recall information, which means if we're remembering it, we're far more likely to take action on our learnings. And on top of this, Yapton, in 1998, also discovered 65% of us prefer to learn visually. And therefore, if we're making sure we're using visuals in our frameworks, we're connecting to people. And if you want to take in 95% of your audience, including the audible, we bring in the fourth key. And this is being vocal. Because when we can talk through the framework, succinctly and smoothly, you don't lose your clients. Because those of you in the business of transformation quite often don't have a trouble talking about what you do, but making it succinct and to point, so you're not losing people before you've even got to your goal, is the challenge. And that's why we make them vocal. Because conversations <laughs> bring connection. And with connection is when we get conversions, which is the profit in business. Lastly is the vehicle. Now, this is how you take your clients on that journey of transformation. And again, if you're the business owner, you might have an online course. And this is a bit like getting in a car and your client is self-driving and taking their own way sort of along the way, you know, you're not giving them much guidance, it's all sort of pre-trained. Or they might hop on a bus or a train and it's about being part of the community. You're all heading to that finish line at the same time. So you're cheering each other on. So that is your group programme. Or it could be hopping on the private jet. You're going faster, further, because you're basically getting that one-to-one -one guided experience. And this is your VIP service when you're working one-to-one -one with your clients. So in total, we have these five keys. And 
when we're bringing it into your business, it's really important we bring in and make it different. And I've worked with everyone from energy workers, to business coaches, designers, to driving instructors. And it connects whether you're left or right brain. Everyone needs a framework in their business. And I've got a few client examples here so you can get an idea of the different flow and how they show up very differently in different businesses. So I've got interior designers, photographers, end of life planners, copywriters, retail assistants, wellness people. And do you remember Dana Gita? Well, this is her framework in the top right, the spiral. She was a voice healer and coach. And as I mentioned before, she was struggling to serve even her basic offers. And after we worked on this framework together, she had a launch and sold for the first time ever over 20K in one launch. And she was blown away with the difference a framework made. Because what she realized is not only did she manage to talk at that perfect level of interest without losing her clients along the way. But equally, her clients could now see the immense value that she had within her program. So instead of saying, thank you very much and goodbye, they were saying, where do I sign up? So if there's one thing that you take away from today is to know that frameworks are for everyone, and if you make your frameworks sparkle, it will help bring your ideas through into profit. And open up the camera app, and you can aim it at the QR code, and you can download my Spark to Sale guide. So if you've got an idea that you'd love to sparkle so you can shine in your business, whether you're introverted or not, I'd love to speak to you. Thank you.